This microphone right here, I got this for around about 30 US dollars. And it's actually funny, the story behind it was when I came to Japan, I bought a new microphone because I wanted to give you guys the best audio on my videos. And I started using this microphone and I didn't get one comment about the audio. And that's when you know something's not really that good. If you change something in your setup, and you've done something different and you don't get one comment about it, then just put on a sad face and try to analyze what happened. And in this case, I started listening very closely with headphones on and I just thought, wow, this $30 microphone sounds better, at least for my voice, than this $500 microphone, which I've actually got to resell. It's called the RE27ND. And I just didn't like it in the end. I just thought it didn't match my voice. but. Today's video, we are going to focus on budget audio and how you can get such good value for money. In fact, in my setup, this microphone, the cable, the stand and the pop filter and also the amp board that it's connected to, the mixer board, out of all the gear in my studio here, I'm actually the most proud of this because in my opinion, it is just the best value I've ever had with any kind of tech in my life. So we're gonna talk about this today, how you can get on something similar, things to do to make your audio just sound so much more crispier for your viewers, and that's both pre-production and post-production, and ultimately what you can do so you don't have to go out and spend hundreds of dollars on audio that you might not even like in the end. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and we've got here the $500 microphone, the RE27ND. Now this microphone differs from the $30 microphone, which is an Audio-Technica AT2035. Now both these microphones will benefit different people in different ways, but I'm gonna tell you guys why I prefer the $30 microphone. The first reason why is that this $500 microphone is actually a dynamic, and this cheaper one here that we got used is a condenser phantom powered microphone. So basically the $30 microphone, the 2035 used, is easier to power. Not only that, it's got extremely low self noise. So the more you amp it, the less you're having to fight editing out noise in post. And in fact, a lot of my videos, I don't even do any noise removal because this microphone right here is just so quiet. Though do let us know in the comment section below what you think of this $500 microphone and how it sounds. I've done back and forth testing and I honestly don't really like the sound coming out of it. So I'm just gonna resell this thing and move on with life and get back to the audio that you guys constantly comment on and you wanna know more about. Though getting back to audio with you guys, what we have is only one half of the equation. We've got the microphone. And I would recommend, this is my go-to microphone, the 2035. There's also, if you're into a bit more unique microphones, there was the Japanese built 2035, which is actually called the AT3035. I'm actually in the market for one of those. I'd like to buy one, see how it differs from the 2035. But essentially, this microphone right here is an absolute winner for generally anyone who wants to do voice work because it's relatively flat, it's got a great warm profile, and it's so easy to EQ in post. However, more on the EQing a little bit later, let's talk about the other half that makes this equation such a great budget option. And that is the mixer board itself. This has a preamp on board. It's actually got two preamps, and it's got 48 volt phantom power. This model here is called the Eurorack MX602A. And I ended up picking this thing up for even cheaper of a deal than the microphone itself. We got this for a little under 30 USD and it was in mint condition. However, this mixer board was made, I believe, at least from the research I did, it was made back in 2004. So that's a long time, that's 18 years ago, this mixer board was made and I'm using it all this time later. And you may be wondering like 18 years, Brian, that's a huge time for audio and surely there's been massive upgrades, right? When we compare that to monitors, we had like 720p monitors back in 2004. We had a crappy 
LCDs that are now OLEDs and there's 4K and there's mobile phones, there was flip phones and now there's smartphones with OLED screens and all this new tech. However, the one thing that really hasn't advanced a whole lot actually since the 1980s is audio. In fact, in the 1980s, they came out with such aggressive advancements in audio that even if you've got gear from that era, you can still use it today with exceptional results. And so stuff from early 2000s is going to be, in my opinion, ridiculously good value for money, especially on the used market, because a lot of people are not going to be looking for it. But also on that note, there's a lot of people who are just going to overlook the, the fact that when these mixer boards and especially microphones were made, things were so cheap. Inflation wasn't anywhere near of a problem as it was back in the early 2000s as it is now, but also commodities were so ridiculously cheap. And so a mixer board and a microphone, they actually use quite a bit of metals in their production. And so the prices of those metals nowadays has gone up a lot. So getting a mixer board like the 602A actually has, in my opinion, a lot more value packed into it, even though it was a budget option back then, it would be considered maybe nowadays like a mid-range to high-end mixer board versus the stuff that's coming out. So this thing right here, it's powering the mic. It does so with absolutely no noise and it's doing a great job. So that's the second half of the equation. You've got to get a good mixer board. And so what better than to get these analog mixer boards and they've got the line out and then you can plug that into your motherboard because essentially with your motherboards nowadays, the onboard audio with a motherboard, this is actually the third equation which we will talk about, but a lot of motherboards will have a line in nowadays that's actually very good quality. And you shouldn't notice really any drop in audio performance if you're using the line in on your motherboard. And so that's exactly what we're doing here today. We've got the microphone, we've got the cable, which the cable came included, the XLR cable came included with the microphone. We then got a pop filter and a stand. We got that for about $10 off Amazon. And then we had the mixer boards. And there it is with that number, $70. We'll say it again. That's how much I paid for the audio that you guys are hearing today on my channel. And I've tried the more expensive options. I tried the fancy RE27ND microphone. I tried the more expensive mixer board. In fact, I bought this mixer board and when I turned the volume knob up, the amp volume, it actually started inducing some noise and I just wasn't happy with it. And I returned that mixer board under the 30 day Amazon uh, period. And so that's another reason why I like buying from Amazon. If something, if the performance is inadequate, you can return it. But I was just shocked by when I started doing research into audio and just applying the value budget mindset, I got not just what I wanted, I got more, a lot more than what I expected. And so that's what I wanted to share with you guys in this video because uh, when I was doing a live stream, you guys asked us, what audio are you using? Man, that thing sounds amazing. You've got to share that with us. And I got actually quite a lot of comments when I do live streams about how good the audio actually sounds. So in today's video, I have laid it all out on the table. I'll put some links in the description below if you want to check out the two main components that I'm using. Though there is another thing too, and that is under $100 there are some decent choices out there too if you don't want to do any of the research or looking for used parts. There are some decent microphone options out there. For instance, uh, the Corsair Wave microphone, that's a really easy to use, noise-free microphone solution for someone who just wants to plug and play and doesn't want any hassles. In my opinion, the audio on that microphone isn't as good as what we're getting here today but it's still an easy option if you just want to get into recording and then maybe you can learn as you go along. In fact, I keep a Corsair Wave microphone on hand in case anything goes wrong in my setup and I need to record audio. I absolutely have to and I don't have time to replace the gear. So that's my backup microphone and it's a very inexpensive option too, especially for what you're getting. And now you're thinking at this stage, Brian, you've told us everything. It's time to go out and look for a used bargain on audio. But before you do that, there is one more point I do want to make, and that is EQing. And that is the equalizer. You can do this either post-production or pre-production, or you can do both if you want. I actually prefer to do pre-production because you're uh, coloring the sound 
in an analog way. And I believe it's more smoother to the ears, but you can also do this in post-production too. And so this is a big thing, right? You're gonna be changing those frequencies that the human ears find more pleasing. And so I know for instance, 8K, that's gonna give you a bit more brightness in your voice. And then around the uh, 2K level as well, you can tune that up or down depending on your voice. And there's also some other frequencies to look out for to tune to get the biggest impact on your voice. So you can play around with this in post or you can play around with it pre with a mixer like mine, which has three different bands, one for more bass, one for more mids and one for a bit more treble. So I like to give the treble a little bit of a boost because that gives it a bit more edge, a bit more clarity, especially with the 2035, which is a bit of a warmer mic, but I also like to build on that warmth and really bring out that low end. So I give the low end a bit of a boost as well. So this is how I EQ my mic, but also in post-production, I've then got an EQ setting. If I'm sitting further away from the mic than usual, I'll add even more bass, or if I'm closer to the mic, I'll add even more treble. And so that's what you can do in post, as well as putting on a limiter in your recording software. For instance, I use OBS Streamlabs, and I put in a minus 1.4 decibel clip feature. So if I'm talking too loud into the microphone, basically it's gonna save my audio from sounding absolutely horrible and that's gonna still come out okay. And in fact, you can record in this style of manner if you don't have a condenser in your uh, system. You can actually just smash the gain, smash the ampage because it's a really good condenser with low self noise and the mix is pretty good. You can actually smash the volume on this and then limit that. And even if you're talking really soft and then you go pretty loud, it's all gonna pretty much equalize itself. And so that's the easiest way if you don't have a compressor to actually compress your audio and essentially fatten it out so it sounds more even at all times. Anyhow guys, you have been waiting for this video. I do apologize, I said I'd be doing it for months and I finally got that day after this 4090 testing where I've got this break and I'm like, I'm gonna make this video, I'm gonna make that video, I'm gonna make this video and this is one of those videos that I did promise for a while and I'm finally delivering it. So hopefully this video has had a lot of useful information that you can take home and in terms of microphone recommendations, the final thing I'm gonna say is Every microphone is going to have a different profile and your voice, of course, will have a different profile. So trying to find the best microphone out of the box, I wouldn't try and entertain it. I'd actually just try and get a very strong, rich microphone like the AT2035 and then EQ it in post, see what matches your voice and then from there, you can find that microphone that boosts those frequencies if you wanna go with a native route and a more expensive option. But for me personally, I think I've found the best microphone for my voice given everything. And it just so happens to be that the value is extremely good too. So when it comes to microphones, do not fear. You can do a lot with EQ. Just like if we're editing a video with color, we can do a lot on the visual end and you notice that straight away. And it's funny, when it comes to EQing, a lot of people ignore it, but it can make a big difference to making your audio sound good. Anyhow guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Hopefully I packed it with enough good information to take away and get your audio sounding better in a good way. And if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, then be sure to hit that like button. And also if you stayed this far and you wanna see the tech content as soon as it drops at Tech Air City, be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.